Okay, so Apple held a, a launch event about 10 days ago where it launched the iPhone 16 and with it, of course, the new Apple Silicon, the A18 and the A18 Pro. These devices have now started to hit the shelves. So we're starting to get some real actual benchmarks in. So in this video, I want to take a look at the Apple Silicon A18 Pro specifically and also compare its performance to the devices from Qualcomm, Google, and even from Apple itself. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the first thing to notice is that this new chip is built on a three nanometer process, second generation from TSMC, and this will have an impact about the clock speed. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Now the A18 Pro, like its predecessor, is a hexa-core CPU setup. That means it has two performance cores and four power efficiency cores. Of course, on top of that, it's also got a GPU, it's got some uh, media decoders, it's got a neural engine and so on. But we're going to mainly focus on the CPU performance in this video. Now, talking of that six-core CPU, Apple says it's 15% faster than the A17 Pro uses 20% less power than the A17 Pro, has larger caches than the A18, because this is specifically the A18 Pro. And most importantly, it has these next generation ML accelerators. Now, if you follow the videos here on my channel, you will notice that I've mentioned this before, particularly when the M4 came out, that really was a clue to the fact this is now an ARM V9 processor from Apple. So just as the M4 was ARM V9, then of course, uh, Apple are basically using the safe CPU template and putting that into the A18 and the A18 Pro. So we know this is an ARM V9.2 a because it is the application processor compared to let's say m for its microcontrollers okay so let's start looking at the cpu performance we're going to be using geekbench now for the a18 pro the single core score is 3350 compared to 2931 in the a17 pro 2506 in the a16 bionic and that is an amalgamation of kind of the top 10 best scores currently published on Geekbench uh, website. There's a browser that you can go through to look at all of the uh, tests that have been run. I kind of take an average of kind of the 10 best ones that I saw there. Now that means that it is 14% faster than the A17 Pro. Apple said 15%, so we'll give them that. And 33% uh, faster than the A16 Bionic. This is single core. Now when you translate that into multi-core, remember that all three of these processors here in these graphs are hexa-core processors, then it goes 8,149 up from 7,278 up from 6,508. So we can see that it is a significant improvement in both single-core and multi-core scores. But it's worth noting that the A18 Pro is actually clocked faster than the A17 Pro and the A16 Bionic. So of course, if you up the clock speed, if your designer allows you to up the clock speed, and that's partly to do with the internals of the design, but also to do with the process node, as I said, that three nanometers will come back here to be important, then you can see that it is actually running slightly faster. So if it's running faster, you're gonna get greater performance, even if it's actually the same chip, exactly the same CPU design, you're gonna get a, a greater score. So one interesting thing to look at is what happens if you take that single core score and divide it by the number of gigahertz. What is the performance per gigahertz? And that will tell you the relative performance of the CPU core, regardless of the clock frequency they're running it at. Okay, so here are those numbers, 827 for the A18 Pro, 775 for the A17 Pro, 724 for the A16 Bionic. So that's kind of at a neutral level for the clock speed. So what does that mean? It actually means that the internal architecture of the A18 Pro is about 6% faster than that of the A17 Pro. If you ran both of them at the same clock speed, then the A18 Pro would be 6% faster. Okay, so let's move on to look at the competition. Here we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the Dimensity 9300, and the Tensor G4. So again, we can see here a big difference in the single core scores 3350 compared to 2240 then remember that most of these chips here are octa-core processors so for the multi-core scores they are 
kind of closer and particularly here you can see the similarities between the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the Dimensity 9300 because they're basically using the same CPU setup, both of them uh, using the ARM Cortex-X4 cores there. And uh, so basically we can see that these numbers are kind of the same. Uh, this one is slightly lower because it's clocked lower. But the important thing is here is that the Apple chip is still faster in terms of single core and multi core scores. Now, again, if you then do that single core score per gigahertz, because, you know, what are these different chips running at? For example, the Tensor G4 is running at a slightly lower uh, CPU frequency. You can see here 661, 669 and 621. These are basically because these are all the same chip running there. This 58. Five is the previous generation, but you can still see here this 827 that the uh, A18 Pro has the best uh, micro architecture, we call it. That's the internal design of the CPU. It's still ahead of the field. Now, what happens if we compare the A18 Pro with the other uh, M chips? So not the A chips that we find in the iPhone, but the M chips that we find in iPads and in MacBooks. I've tried to use iPad Pros here as much as I can. There is a MacBook Air number in there. Uh, I don't think there was an M3 with the iPad Pro. I think that's the reason why I use that there. But we can see here that uh, 3350 is better than the M1 in terms of single threaded performance. That's what you'd expect. Better than the M2. That's what you'd expect. Better than the M3. That's what you'd expect. Because why? Because basically it's the M4 CPU. And here we can see the M4 CPU uh, 37. Uh, 100, 3700, uh, and that's for the 9 core version and for the 10 core version. Now, obviously, these chips are going to be better in terms of their multi core, but even starting with the M1, that's an octa core processor. This is a hexa core, and then of course, these ones go up and up 10 cores here and so on. But you can see that this is a very powerful uh, chip, but it's got less cores than the other M chips. And again, back to that. Uh, single core score per gigahertz. You can see here that the A18 Pro and the M4 are very similar because they are of the same generation and these other chips uh, are lower down. And it was interesting, I noted this in a previous video, there didn't actually seem to be that much of an improvement from the M1 to the M2 to the M3. Mainly it was due to clock speed. A bit of higher clock speed produced greater uh, a performance, but we can definitely see this generational leap here. And I noticed this in my M4 video that I did, this generational leap here. So we've got ARM V9 here in the A18 Pro, ARM V9 here in the M4, better micro architecture, and clearly uh, the, the same kind of uh, template for the CPU design, and clearly uh, better than the previous ones. So in summary, the A18 and the A18 Pro use the same basic CPU design as the M4, and that means it's an ARM V9.2. It's clocked at a higher frequency than the A17 Pro, thanks in part to the new process node. Apple Silicon remains the fastest smartphone processors available today, and the A18 Pro is faster in terms of single core performance than the M1, the M2, and the M3. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Now, obviously, we've got more CPUs coming out in this latter part of the year. And when those actually come out in devices, then I will, of course, update this video to bring you the latest and greatest. But this is what's available today. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.